Climate change is predicted to cause more frequent and higher intensity extreme weather events, such as heat waves. Within NACLIM, scientists are trying to find out how to prepare our society for this. Our role in the NACLIM project is to provide climate projections uh, for the three focal cities of the project, being Antwerp, Almada and Berlin, and we focus there on uh, heat stress. Um, we have an, developed an urban climate model with which we can downscale global climate information towards the neighborhood level, the level at which the city authorities and people from the city administrations are used to work with and can deal with. We calculate the amount of heat wave days uh, in a city and in the surroundings of a city and it's by looking at the temperatures uh, inside uh, the city both during the daytime and during the nighttime. So a heat wave day is, is a day during which the temperature is very high both during the day and during the night. And we see that there are much more heat wave days in a city than outside of the city due to the urban heat island effect. The urban heat island effect is the fact that in the city center the temperatures are much higher than in the uh, areas around the city. Due to the building materials that absorb the solar light that heat up quite fast and that release their heat in the afternoon and during the evening. And therefore the temperature inside the cities is a lot higher than in the, the areas around the city. A third indicator we are looking at is the uh, daytime heat stress. So people walking around in the city, they experience more heat stress from radiation effects uh, caused by the so uh, solar radiation and also thermal radiation from the buildings and the surfaces, which are very hot. And you can see that the thermal comfort of people in city centers is, uh, is much worse than people that can walk around in a park like this one. We take the data, which we extract parameters, such as a number of heat wave days per year, and we compile it with socioeconomic data, such as total population, density, number of hospital, rest home, child care, in certain area of the city. So like this, we, have, we could map, okay, in this area, you have a, number, a high number of hospital, and then it's also an area when there is a, a higher temperature, or higher number of uh, heat wave days per year, then it's, a, it's an area at risk. NACLIN gave us uh, a much uh, more detailed overview about the problem of heat stress. Uh, we knew already more or less the situation today, the urban heat island effect, um, but it gives us an overview how this heat stress will evolve in the future. And it gives us also more detailed information each neighborhood if it's heat stress vulnerable or not, um, if there are really problems to solve or not. We are densely built a historical neighborhood, so the center of the city is really, um, when it comes to heat stress, is not so comfortable in the summer. So we have to create really cool spots or spots which are much nicer to, uh, to be in, uh, in the summer, in a, in a hot day. So there are a number of adaptation measures that cities can take and one very important one is greening the city. So try to get as much green inside the city as possible because the trees, the grass surfaces, they evaporate water, they cool the temperatures and they also provide shade like the big trees here. You have other measures like for instance adapting the buildings, installing green roofs, installing green walls. Try to lighten the color of the building so that more solar radiation is reflected and the building is less heated. You can also try to bring more water inside the city center by creating fountains, by creating, by reopening rivers, by creating places where people can, can have a place to cool down. We realize that if now we are experience five to six days of heat wave per year, in 2100, we will experience 30 to 40 heat wave days in summer. So this is a, a huge increase and it's a problem and we have to address it. We are trying to mix the green infrastructure that we have, trees, green parks, gardens, uh, natural areas, with the blue infrastructure, like ponds and retained bases, the streams. 
Uh, so we have several services that nature can provide us and we can use it to have more be multi-benefits to respond to climate change challenges. We have a good uh, overview over, over the current situation of climate in Berlin, but not over the effects uh, of climate change. And this uh, uh, lack of uh, data we got from the um, uh, Naklin project. As a result of World War II, we have at some places areas which are of low density. We have uh, uh, many private and uh, public uh, pressure on these uh, free areas, of course. And I know um, Berlin is a capital, it's a metropolitan area, and we will grow up to 4 million inhabitants, perhaps uh, at the end of uh, 2030. That's, uh, those are all arguments to intensify the density in the inner city. But on the other side, um, Berlin has a great advantage that people are living in the inner city, uh, not only for trade, but also an area for housing and for living. And we have to discuss more about the um, relationship between green and build up. And I hope Naklim is an additional argument um, to serve green areas in the inner city, not only at the border of the city. Climate services uh, are becoming extremely important uh, for cities because it is the place where the majority of population is already living. In the future, the overarching majority of population will live in cities. And it is there where the top-down policies from governments have to match with the bottom-up activity that come from the civil society and from city authorities. Climate services has to become a daily tool for decision makers at any level. However, for this to grow, also science has to grow because uh, there are a lot of knowledge gaps that still need to be filled in order to make those services better in the future.